Hello, this is Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Support for the Nutrition Diva Podcast comes from Third Love, the lingerie brand that uses real women's measurements to design better fitting bras. Did you know that 80% of women are actually wearing the wrong bra size? Well, with Third Love, it takes just 30 seconds to answer a few questions to find the perfect fitting bra for you, all from the comfort of your own home. Third Love stands behind their products so much that our listeners can try one for free for 30 days, just pay up front for shipping and returns, and then your exchanges are always free and easy. Visit thirdlove.com slash diva to get started. I don't have to tell you that we live in a deeply divided nation. Now, don't worry. I'm not venturing into politics here. I'm talking about the never-ending debate about whether you'll lose more weight by cutting carbs or by limiting fat. There have been dozens and dozens of studies and numerous meta-analyses pitting the two approaches against one another, and they've been evaluated not just for weight loss, but other measures of health, such as cholesterol, blood sugar, blood pressure, and body composition as well. Each side has put some points on the board, but neither one of them is running away with the game. Part of the problem is that the terms low-fat and low-carb are used somewhat indiscriminately. Diets that are described as low-carb in the medical literature might get as few as 10% of their calories from carbohydrates or as much as 35% of calories from carbohydrates, and the same goes for low-fat diets. But an even bigger problem is that categorizing diets simply by how much carbohydrate or fat they contain is like trying to categorize novels simply by how many nouns and verbs they contain. You can follow a low-carbohydrate diet and eat bacon cheeseburgers, without the bun, of course, every night for dinner. Or your low-carb menu could feature grilled salmon and avocado every night. You could be getting most of your non-carbohydrate calories from fat, or you could be eating lots of protein. Who could say? And similarly, on a low-fat diet, you might start every day with sugary breakfast cereal topped with skim milk, or you could be sitting down to steel-cut oats and fresh berries for breakfast. You might be getting very little protein or quite a bit. These uncontrolled variables could have a significant impact on things like your blood chemistry and fat loss, not to mention your appetite, digestion, and energy. That's why I was so intrigued to read about a recent study that compared a diet that was low in carbs and high in fat with a more balanced diet while controlling for many of those other variables. In this study, which involved 44 overweight men, the participants ate more or less the same foods, just in different proportions. So one group held their carbohydrate intake to just 10% of calories, while the other group ate slightly more than half their calories from carbohydrates. However, both groups were instructed to completely avoid added sugars, refined carbohydrates, and processed foods. Protein consumption was held constant between the two groups, as was the amount of omega-6 and omega-3 fats in their diets. Although the low-carb group ate a lot more fat than the balanced diet group, both were getting their fats from the same foods, mostly butter, cheese, meat, and eggs. And finally, both groups ate around a pound of vegetables a day. Be still my beating heart. In other words, despite the significant differences in carbohydrate and fat intake, both of these groups were eating a diet of minimally processed whole foods. And after 12 weeks, both groups posted similar results in terms of weight and fat loss. In other words, you don't necessarily have to give up carbs or fat to lose weight and improve other health indicators. Just give up the junk food. Of course, you'll also have to eat fewer calories if you want to see a change on the scale. But you might find that replacing highly processed foods with whole foods ends up reducing your calorie intake automatically and relatively painlessly. Another recent study found that Americans on average get more than half their calories from ultra-processed foods, meaning those ready-to-eat meals, snacks, convenience foods, and beverages, accounting for about 1,200 calories and about 65 grams of added sugar per day. If you were to replace most or all of those chips, fries, sweets, fast foods, and soft drinks with whole or minimally processed foods, 
I bet you'd have a very hard time getting it to add up to anywhere near 1200 calories. But you know, if that's too big a shift to make all at once, you could start by replacing half the processed food in your diet with whole foods and see what happens. Just as I was finishing writing this week's episode, I happened to receive an email from Aaron who wrote, is it better for your long-term health and weight stabilization to forego meat or to give up carbs? I can't do both. I've tried both vegetarian and paleo, and there are communities and specialized foods and great cookbooks for both lifestyles. What I want to know is which one pays off more in the long run. I will add that I find it easier to give up meat than to say no to pasta, whole wheat bread, and oatmeal muffins. Well, Aaron, I really think that either one of those approaches can work. To me, the fact that you'd rather give up meat than whole grains is a strong argument against trying to embrace your inner cave woman. And if you find that identifying with a particular community or a lifestyle is helpful or just makes it more fun, go for it. But I think it's also fine to be a vegetarian who occasionally eats meat or to follow a paleo-ish diet. In my opinion, keeping the emphasis on whole foods and balance is probably much more important than maintaining a strict adherence to either set of rules. And that's pretty much the point of this week's podcast on low-carb versus low-fat diets as well. If you have questions or comments, post them on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. You'll find a transcript for today's show, including links to the studies that I mentioned at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com, where you can also access the complete Nutrition Diva archives. And my nutrition blog is at nutritionovereasy.com. And I always really do love to hear from you. Have a great week and remember to eat something good for me.